chopped off again. <laughs> hey guys, it's Ted Bogert with the Ted Show. I'm super excited to be back. Um, I have an old friend, a newer old friend, Robert Barry is here with Robert Barry Gallery. And we're here to meet and talk about Ned Martin, Ned Martin Art. Uh, Ned has a show at the gallery, Spirits Through Time. So we're gonna talk all about that. I'm super excited. Uh, welcome back to the show, Robert, and welcome, Ned. Good thank morning, you, Ned. Um, thank all right, you so, so much for having us back. I'm so excited. Anytime you want to come on and talk about art, I'm a big fan, and I love every second of it. All right, so I want you to give us a little origin story on you, Robert, and then uh, give us the lowdown, the 411 on Ned. Absolutely. Well, um, your listeners will probably remember that I'm the founder of Robert Berry Gallery, located right here in New York City. And I believe that great art can change everyone's life for the better. And everyone should have art in their lives that make them happy. And after leading some of the most cutting edge galleries in the city for over 15 years, I decided to create my own virtual gallery to exhibit and work with the artists that I personally believe in. I wanna tell their stories and the incredible painter Ned Martin is one of the stories that I wanna share with all of your viewers. I mean, look at his, uh, before you introduce Ned and tell us a little bit about him, I love Ned's background and your background. It's so artist. Like you look at the two of you and it's like, oh, that's an artist. Um, I love the quintessential st stereotypical in a good way uh, look. So uh, introduce Ned for us. Absolutely. Well, I first met Ned Martin um, about 12, maybe 13 years ago. Yeah. Um, and he was one of the best artists I've seen in a really long time. Um, he was doing hyper real landscapes, um, incredible figurative work. And we had to get through his first show. Um, it was a gallery down in Tribeca on North Moore Street. Um, sold a few works. And since then, I've done um, two more shows. And Ned was actually the first exhibition under the Robert Berry Gallery brand back in 2014. Fantastic. All right, Ned. We're dying to learn about you and then let's talk about the show. But you know, everybody likes to know beginnings. Did you always know you were an artist? Did you have a gift early on? What was that all like? People love the journey part. So welcome. Um, thanks, Ted. I, I really have a little aversion to uh, that whole gift idea. Um, I think people have talent or they don't have talent, but that's a very small part of it actually. I think it has a lot to do with worth ethic and uh, doing things despite all the odds and stuff like that. So I have a little problem with that whole idea, <laughs> the whole notion about, uh, you know, magically waking up one day and you can do all this stuff. You know? um, so you, it was a journey for you, but you, you had an, did you have an interest in art at an early age? Um, yeah, it's just the one thing that worked for me. You know, I, um, Mrs. Cole in, in fourth grade came by and said, oh, that's amazing. Uh, what is that? You, you know, what, what I, and I did this clay thing out of, uh, 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 for a, of Abe Lincoln sitting on a log or something. <laughs> you know, oh, that's great. You know, when it came to math and history and the rest of it, it was like, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> And I, so had a bit of a, I had a bit of a tough uh, childhood, so um, I, you know, that I really kind of found my way through art because it was gratifying. And um, by the time I got to high school, you know, I had kind of a reputation and people asked me to do stuff for them and um, it kind of found me. How do you find how do you find your style along the way? I, you know, you talked about the Abe Lincoln clay uh, <laughs> guy. How do you develop what you know? And ha like uh, Robert, before we went live, was talking about a specific style. And when I was listening to him describe you, I'm like, okay, I've heard all of those words. I'm going to look them up later. But there's so many styles of art. There's so many um, ways to describe it. How did you find your particular um, art technique or art passion? It's, it sounds a little trite, but I, I you know, um, it's by accident and trial and error. But, um, you know, I have personally have a, an, an aversion to brush stroke for some reason. And I, I really don't know why. But when I see <laughs> an obvious brush stroke, 
I have to go in and scratch through it. And so I do a lot of scraping and uh, uh, it's either with cut up credit cards or pieces of metal or pieces of plastic, hard plastic or something, uh, or it'll stick even, and I'll scratch through everything that I've just put down. And that's part of, um, I think, an influence by people like N.C. Wyatt or Andrew Wyatt. And, and uh, you know, that's part of the, the, the development of style is because you get influence. Um, and how do you how do you get inspired? What is it? Um, I have a lot of musical guests on too, and I'm always fascinated by the story of what inspires you for a piece of work for them, what inspires a song, the lyrics, what inspires your art? Is it is it a uh, personal experience, something you see and observe? Where does your inspiration come from? Life, you know, um, I lost my mother and my sister at the beginning of this year. Sorry. Uh, I think in part that was what I was trying to say uh, with this show. It was about women and what they meant to me, what they do mean. So, um, ugh. <laughs> sorry, don't want to get no, off. I Two. love it. I, I, I appreciate you sharing that because I think people, um, I was telling Robert earlier that you can sort of see my early purchases of art back behind me. And so I think as you begin to understand art, the more that you can understand maybe the story or the inspiration and where the artist was going or what moved them or what their journey was, the more that the piece speaks to you. Um, and so I love to hear about the journey. So thank you for sharing that. Um, my, my, my mother uh, was a single mother. She had a very tough time as well. She, uh, my parents got divorced when they were four, so that part of that ugly childhood thing. And uh, my my brothers were older, so I did, couldn't relate to them very well. But my uh, sister and my aunt, my mother, were very very important to me. And that was part of what this series is about. It's about honoring women. I got stuck in Bolivia and and the during the COVID crisis. Wow. I went over there for a week and a half and ended up getting stuck there and stayed nearly six months. Holy moly. How do you adapt to that? Well, that was the cool part because, um, you know, I've had controversy and, and trials, uh, a, lot of, a lot of stuff, a lot of challenges through life. And what I've found mostly is I, I withdraw. And um, I find it very comforting, honestly. I was lucky enough for my girlfriend to uh, uh, to, tell, to to hook me up with this beautiful apartment that was empty and it was getting renovated and it has a beautiful view of the city in, in uh, Santa Cruz. And um, I was up there by myself and what I didn't have was a couple of things. I didn't have galleries telling me what to paint and what not to paint. So it took me about six and a half weeks to kind of mutter through all these explorations that I was having emotionally and whatnot. And um, I, I came upon this women uh, thing and it was about honoring women. Um, I also didn't have anything to paint on. So there were all these kitchen cabinets were being torn down. So I ended up having a lot of painting panels that I ripped from there and, and uh, it uh, just made things work, you know? That's so uh, cool. So it, it was it was challenging and it was it was not a, a, um, not a happy scene there because uh, everything else around us, uh, they were literally the military out in uh, the streets uh, checking your IDs and saying you can't go out. We literally were on sh very strict um, lockdown. Did you get stir crazy? Did that help with the creativity? I, I would imagine that when you're in your thoughts all by yourself for that long, um, you know, you start to think some crazy things like we all have during COVID. Well, but um, 
I'm a little claustrophobic, so I found that a little uneasy. But again, I really think it helped the situation. It's just like any other situation where if you know, somebody dies, you, um, you find somehow not just strength, but uh, inspiration from it. And it's, um, it's powerful, very powerful. So, so tell us about the show. Uh, tell us about the exhibit. Do we call it a show or an exhibit, Robert? What do, um, what do we call it? Well, I guess in today's age, either are appropriate. Um, let's we can go with the classic exhibition. Um, if that's okay with you, Ted. I love it. So tell us about the exhibition. I'm always. I know that each piece is um, your baby. These are these are things that you have birthed, that you have created. And so, how do you how do you help? How do you curate? How do you decide what goes into a show? What is that process like? Because it's not like you just pull arbitrary paintings it has to make sense there's a theme spirits through time uh so you really have to know what you want in the show to make it flow as a creative well i guess the history of the exhibition goes back 12 or 13 years when i first met ned and we did a show back in 2014 and on the west side of manhattan and it was mostly an abstract painting show and he changed his technique from more realistic things. And he actually started using these aluminum printing plates that were mounted onto panel. So you had some commercial advertising, newspaper-like ads, and that started to be visible in the abstract paintings. And so when Ned um, flew down after maybe a month or so, he called me randomly because I hadn't heard from him. And he's like, I'm still in Bolivia, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> and I told him, the first thing I said is, are you painting? And he said, yes. And so he told me the story that he was set up in an apartment and there was these wooden panels, um, cabinets, and he basically pulled them off the wall and was able to start painting on them. So it was something, it was practical. And it was also that he could bring them back to New York when he could easily. And so mostly for the current show, it goes back as well um, to the fall when he started this new body of more landscape inspired paintings that were bolder, more colorful. And they combined the hyper real landscape works with a lot of the bold, abstract and colorful things. And so that side of the show started about a year ago and the figurative work is more new. And it seems to me that they're more inspired um, by 19th century European figurative work and more importantly, there's a lot of Egyptian references, which I really find exciting that it's a little bit classical, it's a little bit modern, and there's a lot going on. What do you think of that um, description, Ned? I'm just gonna let you guys talk. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it great when somebody can just describe it for you? I love it. Yes, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I was mesmerized. I'm like, oh, that's good. Okay, so we're done. That was fantastic. I want to meet that yeah. guy. <laughs> I want to um, see what, what I think a lot of people don't understand is how you're how you're doing the show. So you mentioned it a little bit before. So talk about how this works when you have a virtual show a virtual exhibition absolutely well what we're doing is the you asked the question of the curation so I apologize for not answering that no no so I asked a lot of questions you pick <laughs> what you want to answer it's fine <laughs> so it was finding those best landscape pieces from the fall and early spring and then when Ned was working on the new figurative works um, I told him make the best painting you can ever make and um, before the show opened, probably about maybe a week before the show opened, we started going through the works together. Um, we really like these, um, I believe, seven landscape paintings we chose. And there was eight figurative paintings that we decided worked well as one cohesive unit. So we took um, the landscape works and we now virtually installed those into a big gallery. So you can basically see the works as we would hang them in person if it wasn't for COVID. And for the landscape works, we put them in an even bigger museum quality room that really showcases what Ned can do and how these works should be viewed and appreciated. I think that people, and how do, what do they do? Do they just go to, and I know I'm gonna ask this later and reiterate it, but I wanna make sure people can just go to the website and follow the link. Is that how it works? Exactly. Um, anyone watching the show um, now or after can go to robertberrygallery.com and see Ned's current show, Spirits Through Time. 
and all of the great roster of artists we put together. So Spirits Through Time, why that title? Hmm. Well, it has go back to the influence of the, of the women. Um, and once I started thinking about painting women and I, I arrived after that six weeks of kind of floundering around and a lot of false starts, I didn't have a model. So I went through the internet and I started looking at women and I ended up choosing women from the 1800s. And these people just suddenly became very important to me, these, these faces. And I'm realizing, you know, they're all gone too. And I, I felt like if I could just honor them and bring them back, not just to current day, but maybe into the future, uh, that would that would be also a, a good thing. You know, I, I feel like it's powerful. I, 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 I love that. You're giving them a voice from a long time ago. And also, I, I find it fascinating when I, I always want to know the story when I see an old photograph or an old picture. Yeah. I want to know um, what's going on, what's their back, because the, these people were living, breathing human beings yeah. at one time. And I'm just fascinated by what their lives would be or what their stories were and what led up to, uh, especially photography back then, it wasn't inexpensive uh, to have pictures taken. And so when you're looking at people from the 1800s, especially, um, I just want to know what their story is. So I loved that about um, your description of the show. Ned, where can people reach you? If they want to learn more about you, they want to learn more about your art. Um, we want you to buy art. I'm going to say that. Um, we want you to go and visit the, virtually visit the exhibition. So what's the best way for them to reach you, Ned, first? Well, there's a couple of ways. One, the obvious way is to go through Robert Berry galleries. Um, I, I like having these kind of partnerships with galleries because Robert does a hell of a job doing a lot of things that I don't, I'm not good at, frankly. Right. I'd rather just paint. And I, I'd rather defer, not because I'm smoozing up the Robert at the second, but <laughs> I'm saying that he earns his money. He makes money from me. I make money from him. And I think it's, a, it's an important partnership. So I advocate galleries a lot. And Robert's been in the business. We've had a long-term relationship and everything's been great. Um, so the other thing, obvious, obviously, is to go to my website, which is Ned Martin Art, um, and I'm, I'll, that's my handle on all uh, social media as well. We found you. All right, Robert, uh, wrap it up for us. Tell us how. Tell us again how we can uh, see the exhibit. How we can learn more about Robert Barry Gallery and Ned Martin Art through you. Well, lastly, just want to say thank you so much for having me back on the show, Ted. And I'm glad. Anytime. Bring all these talented, amazing human beings. I could listen to somebody talk about their art and their passion for hours, days. So thank you. My pleasure. And my PR person, Deborah Geiger, the best PR person in all She's the world. Amazing. We'll be in touch with you soon. And so everyone watching um, can go to robertberrygallery.com to see Ned's new show, Spirits Through Time. Um, it's open until the 20, um, November 29th. Um, but if anyone has any questions about the show or wants to inquire on any of the paintings, um, please be, feel free to reach out, call, email. I would love to speak with you. Guys, this is a great way. I'm talking to my audience now or our audiences. This is a great way for you to experience it and learn about it at your own pace and your own speed and to really get to know an artist uh we're all we've all adapted to the virtual world uh this is a great way for you to learn about something without uh, a lot of people have told me especially before we go live anything to do with art i'm intimidated ted uh don't be intimidated uh, these guys are amazing they're professionals they want you to experience the joy of however it moves you, the painting, and they want you to be educated about art. So thank you, Robert. Thank you, Ned. Robertberrygallery.com, nedmartinart.com. Thank you, Deborah.
and we'll be back later. You guys have fun. Bye, guys.